Configuring printers and services for file sharing. Printing in Linux is very network oriented. The processes that are behind the scenes that are running the show, they can accept print jobs from remote systems as easily as local ones. And we'll learn how, how to install and configure a printer for your Linux machine. And then we'll move on and talk about file sharing. First we'll use a program called Samba. And that's so that we can share files between Linux and Windows machines. And we'll also touch on NFS, the networked file system. And that's the most common way that we use to share files between Linux machines. So let's get started. So let me give you a little overview here of the Linux printing architecture. Okay? I want to explain what happens between the time when you're sitting at your computer and you tell the computer to print something, and the time that that page comes out of the printer over here. I want to explain the steps in between. So the first thing that you have to do is initiate a print job. And one of the ways that you can initiate a print job is with the Linux command LPR. LPR just stands for line printer. Uh, you probably don't have a line printer. You might never have even seen an actual line printer. You probably have like an inkjet printer, a laser jet printer or something. And LPR will still print to those. It's just the command, the name has stayed the same over the years. So they keep the command name LPR. Now what LPR does is it takes the thing that you want to print, the file, okay, and it gives it to this sort of overseer of the whole thing, which is LPD. The process name is LPD, and that stands for the line printer daemon. And remember, daemons are just these processes that are running behind the scenes taking care of things, and the LPD daemon is taking care of, of printing jobs. Okay? And what LPD does is it decides which print queue the job should go in. Okay? Now all the print queue is, is it's just like a line. Okay, like, a, like at the bank or something. You get into a line at the bank and you, you get at the back and the people are serviced at the front one by one. Okay, so the, the, so the print queues are over here. Okay, and LPD will decide which job your print queue should go into based on the specifications that you gave it. Okay, so a job would go in the print queue and maybe there's a whole bunch of jobs in the different print queues. And these print queues can be serviced by m maybe different printers. Maybe uh, one print queue is for this printer uh, to print one-sided and this print queue is for this printer to print two-sided pages. Okay, so if this printer is capable of printing double duplex pages like both sides of the paper, uh, but some people don't want to print that way because it's some official contract or something that they're not allowed to be printed on two sides, then we would have two different print queues for that print printer. And maybe this print queue is for some other printer. So LPD will take the print job from you, will print it in the print queue, and then the print queue will be sort of attached to this printer, and the printer will pull jobs out as soon as it's finished with the next one. As soon as it's finished with one, it'll pull out the next one out of the queue and service it, and you know, then the page comes out of the printer and it gets all printed on. Okay? And that's what happens in this whole process. So the two main uh, services are LPR is the, the command that you're going to type, and LPD is the, the demon that's running behind the scenes. Now let's add even more detail to this picture, but before I do that I want to clarify something. I drew the computer over here and then I drew the line printer daemon and the print queues over here. This is really all on the same computer right now. Think of it that way. The line printer daemon is running on this box, you typed LPR on the same computer, the print queues are on this computer, and then they're hooked up to the printer by some wire. Okay? So this is all one computer right now. Think of it that way. An LPD, this, pro this, this demon here, this line printer demon, can accept print jobs from some other computer on the network. And the way that works is some other computer on the network, you know, initiates an LPR command, but if there's no LPD process running on this computer, then that LPR command has to go over to some other computer where LPD is running and pass the print job off to it. And LPD takes that print job and sticks it into a print queue just like the local uh, process, just like the local print command. As a matter of fact, LPD doesn't even know whether the LPR command came from some remote machine or some local machine because printing is so network oriented in Linux that even the local LPR command does the exact same thing as the remote command and LPD interacts with those in the exact same way so it doesn't even know whether it's a local or remote job. Okay, now let's add some more detail over to this part of the picture. First, let's think about what happens when you print. What kinds of things are you going to print? So if you're going to print an email message, like a text file, or you're going to print uh, some GIF file or some JPEG file, like some graphic picture, okay? Well, well, what happens here is by the time that thing gets to the print queues, then it, it's already been transformed. And one of the things it might have been transformed into is something we call PostScript. Now, PostScript was like the standard printing language back in the 80s before Microsoft Windows even came into existence, okay? And back then, printers were what we called PostScript-ready or PostScript-capable. 
And what happened was the printer had a little uh, CPU in it, it had a little bit of memory in it, and PostScript is really like a programming language. It's just a programming language that specifies how documents look. Okay, so that printer would take that PostScript file and it would use its little CPU and memory in there to print the file out on paper. Okay, nowadays printers, especially cheap printers, do not have that capability. And so instead we offload some of that, that functionality back to the computer that that's, has the print queues. And what we do is in this path in between uh, the print queue and the printer, we have something in there. Uh, one thing we have in there is called a driver. And you've probably heard of print drivers before. It's just some, even in Windows, they have these now. It's just something that interacts between your computer and the printer. It's something that, that translates between the two languages that, that, that these things speak. Okay? Now, when you're dealing with PostScript, a part of that driver or some program that the driver use, uses is called GhostScript. So GhostScript works in combination with the driver here. They're, they team up so that it takes this PostScript file it translates it into something that the printer can understand and the driver sends that stuff off to the printer so the printer can print it out on paper. Okay? Now you don't need to know all the details of PostScript and GoScript to get your printing working on Linux, but you do need to understand whether your printer is printing PostScript or not. And if it's not, you need to make sure that GoScript is in this path somehow, and I'll show you how to get it there. Now before we go back to the Linux screen, let's go over a couple more details of printing in Linux. Uh, the print queues that I was talking about are really just subdirectories of the var spool lpd directory. So if you go into var spool lpd, under that you'll see all the different print queues. Uh, the configuration file that lpd uses is the Etsy print cap. Okay. Now there are alternatives to LPD. Um, some of these alternatives, the Berkeley Standard Distribution has an alternative printing system. There's another alternative printing system called LPRing, LPRNG. Uh, the common Unix printing system uh, differs in a lot of the details. All these things really have the same basic structure. There's print queues and so on. Uh, they, d they have different ways of filtering, like where I was talking about the driver and the GoScript go aspect of the printing system. These all have different, a different features there and different details on how you exactly set them up. Uh, the CUPS uh, printing system uses the Etsy CUPS uh, configuration file instead of Etsy print cap and so on. And you can read about these if you have uh, one of these already installed on your system. It's certainly wor worth reading about and, and, and using it if it's already there. Um, if you don't, then probably LPD is the way to go, the, the one that we were already talking about. Now let's configure a, a printer for our computer. You have to be the root user to do this stuff, so I'll switch over. I think I typed it wrong. Oh no, I did it right. Okay. And uh, the command that I'm going to use is called print tool. This is a graphical user interface that you can use to set up your printer. Um, if you don't have this available, I'll, I'll also go through and show you the uh, config files that, that, that are edited from this command and you can just see how to edit those manually. Okay. So we'll do the print tool command. And uh, like I said, this is a graphical user interface. Once it comes up here, you can see everything's empty in here. There's no queues listed or anything. So we'll just create a new queue from scratch. So I'll click New here, and it's going to walk me through this process. And notice here it says nothing will be done until you hit Finish on the last screen. So no configuration files will be messed up until you hit Finish on the last screen. So you can experiment with this and just cancel before you, before you get there if, if you're unsure of something. So we'll go on and say Next. And what it says is enter the queue's name. Okay, so I'm going to call the queue HP1 because I have a Hewlett Packard printer. Um, I'm also going to pick a local printer queue because I'm not on a network. If you were on a network of Linux machines, you would pick Unix printer so that uh, LPD would accept uh, LPR commands from other uh, computers, not just the computer that it's running on. I just have one computer here, so I'm just going to use it as a local printer. Okay, so again, I'm going to hit next. And now it says select the device to use. LP0 is a good starting point. Your next printer you can make slash dev slash LP1. The next one after that LP2 and so on. So I'm going to take LP0 as the suggestion and, and just go on to next. And now it says select a print driver for your printer. Okay, so this is all nice. It's a nice alphabetized list. You can go under the menu here under HP. And I'm going to work down here. And I've got the uh, DeskJet 560C here. So again, we'll go under that arrow. And again, you can see there's a whole bunch of drivers that I can pick. 
And uh, Perry's rule of thumb is always pick the first driver, and if it doesn't work, pick the next one and pick the next one and so on. Um, that way I can keep straight which ones I picked so, so far. Uh, so I'll do it in some systematized way. Okay. So uh, I'll say that's the driver that I want to pick, and I'm going to pick next again. And now it says about to create the following queue. It's a local printer device. Dev LP0 is the device. Uh, it's a DeskJet 560C, and the driver that I'm using.